If you're wearing pants in lockdown, I don't want to know ya. Hey, how you going? Today we're doing another book recommendation video and I wanted to do something a little bit different and I wanted to recommend my favourite dark romance novels that I have read. And let me tell you, there's more to these stories than just like the romance between two people. These are the type of books that are going to get you in your feels and you might feel a little bit uncomfortable reading certain storylines in some of these books because they are super heavy. Uh, I love this shit. Obviously love standalones or book series that, you know, are just like smutty, you know, teen romance, but I definitely enjoy the heavier shit. There's just something about like a good storyline and heavy shit and like gothic stuff. I just, I don't know, I just really like it. And because it's more like on the heavier side, more darker romance, I decided to do like gray makeup. <laughs> so my lips are like a gray and I've got like a cool tone smoking. You know, and I'm wearing black because it's like gothic, you know. But again, just like my other um, taboo steamy book recommendations video that I filmed a few months ago, this is not for the faint-hearted. These books are not for the faint-hearted, especially if you're diving into dark romance. If you have triggers when it comes to like sexual assault, abuse, then I wouldn't suggest reading these dark romance books because some of them are really twisted. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into my favorite dark romance books. So the first uh, book I want to mention is actually a series and the series is called The Devil Knight Series and this is by the author Penelope Douglas. This series has three books in it, Corrupt, Hideaway and Kill Switch. Now if you know me and you follow me on social media, you would have heard me talk about this uh, book series quite a while ago when I first came across it and I first read it. This book series was the first um, set of books that I read that introduced me into dark romance, I guess. Like, it was something super different for me. I was, you know, reading after and like books like that and then I went into this and I was like, whoa, bitch. This is a whole nother level. Penelope Douglas is one of my favorite authors. Honestly, if you haven't read any of her books, you need to. No one writes a sex scene like Penelope Douglas does. She is so incredibly creative when it comes to her storylines. How she comes up with this shit, I have no idea. I could not do it. Okay, so the first initial book is called Corrupt. Now, to give you guys a storyline, like a briefing, like a blurb to what uh, the Devil Knight series is all about, it entails three stories at the moment. She's still writing more. So these books are about a group of men. There's four of them. Michael, Kai, Damon, and someone else. I forgot the other one. So every Devil's Night, I'm pretty sure it's either Halloween or the night before Halloween, they get a bunch of people together, throw a party, and then they run around uh, their town and just kind of cause a ruckus burn things down, prank people, uh, just get into a lot of trouble. These boys come from super wealthy families with a lot of fucking power. So when you're reading this book, I kind of like vision it as like the OC, uh, but it's like darker. They're known as the Four Horsemen. The first book, Corrupt, starts with Michael, which is one of the guys, and he is like the leader. He's like the alpha of the group. So one year, I think it's a year after they finish high school, so they're in college, they come back to their school, pull out people from their classrooms who they want to be a part of the night. Um, and there's a girl in one of the classrooms called Rika. And she is obsessed with Michael. She's actually the same age as Michael's little brother. And they're actually really close friends. Michael's a few years older than her. She's obsessed with him, like thinks he's the hottest dude. And when you read this book, bitch, he is the hottest dude. Like, Michael, I need to meet you. I know you're a book character, but like me and you, we need a... Sorry, Cooper, but we need to we, we need to hang out. Well, Ricka decides to follow them. She's too young to go with them. They don't take anyone who's underage, so under the age of 18, um, and she's only like 16, I think, at the time. But she like follows them and sneaks out, and then Michael catches her at this party that they're at, and then he's like, all right, bitch, come with us for the night. We're going to take you around on Devil's Night. Then the book flashes forward to now. Three of the horsemen ended up getting locked up that night and have spent the past couple of years in jail and then they're getting released. The only person who didn't get locked up was Michael. So the book kind of goes back and forth between then and now. The three horsemen get out of jail, meet up with Michael and they want revenge because they think Rika was the reason why they all got locked up that night because they let her come along on Devil's Night. Bitch, the shit that they do to Rika, like crazy shit. They want to torment the fuck out of her. Each book follows what happened then, what happened now on that night. But each book is about a 
different guy. So the first book is about Michael and Ricker. The second book is about Kai. The third book is about Damon. My favorite out of the series is probably Corrupt and Kill Switch, even though Hideaway is really good as well. Um, I loved Michael and Ricker's story and I loved Damon and Winters. Um, so that's Kill Switch. Damon and Winters is probably the most heaviest, like the most darkest romance out of all of them. Damon is such a uh, damaged man like he went through a lot of shit when he was a child a lot of like abuse um, and it really comes out throughout the stories and I loved Kill Switch because in Corrupt and Hideaway you don't like Damon but then when you come to read his story you understand why he does the things he does uh, and I just think this book series was amazing something so freaking different obviously like as I said it's a little complex to explain what it is um, but it's one of the best and I love these boys, all of them, like, wow, especially Damon. I love Damon. I'm not meant to love Damon. No one's meant to love Damon, but he is one hunky book boyfriend, I tell you that much. Also, what I loved about the Devil's Night series was at the start of the book, there's like a playlist. Of each book, there's a playlist and you can look it up on Spotify. Um, and a lot of the songs that go with the book are like from Bring Me the Horizon, Slipknot and stuff like that, which I love that shit. I listen to those songs now that they recommended. I envision the story. I envision the Devil's Night books like Corrupt Hideaway, Kill Switch. Um, I loved, loved the fact that it had like metal music in the playlist. Oh my God, there's one scene in Corrupt, like the first book that plays this song, Deathbeds by Bring Me the Horizon. I love this song. Anyway, but now every time I listen to this song, I just think of that scene between Michael and Ricka. I really hope I covered that well. <laughs> okay, my second book, well, I've already talked about three books, but now I want to talk about a standalone, and this is called The Unrequited by Saffron A. Kent, I'm pretty sure. This book is super dark, but in like a quirky way. It kind of reminds me of uh, like this TV show You on Netflix. It's about this girl who got obsessed with her ex-boyfriend, like really obsessed with him to the point where her mum actually sent her like out of state away from home to keep her away from him. So she starts the year off at this new college in this different town away from him away from her mom away from her hometown um, and she's like you know sworn to herself that she's not going to get obsessed with anyone else she's not going to fall in love with anyone else not that she thinks she can because she knows she's still in love with her ex I don't even think it actually is her ex I think they were like friends from memory but I do know they slept together she spots this guy who just immediately like she's just like who are you I want to know everything about you and I love you. In the book, it's like literally the way the TV show You is, like how it's all explained, like when she's watching him and stuff, she's like narrating. Um, it's so good. She references a lot of like Lana Del Rey songs in this book. Um, cause most of these books that I read at the start of the book, they have like a playlist as well. Um, so you can like put on the music while you read it. And I played a lot of Lana Del Rey songs while I was reading this book and it just set the fucking mood. Like reading this book to this song. So yeah, she ends up like finding this guy at college and she's like, I'm fucking stalking you, bitch. But it's like, while she's stalking him, she was like, I should not be stalking him. I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to turn around. But she doesn't turn around. She keeps going. Anyway, she ends up finding out that this guy she's been stalking around the school is a professor at her college. I love a student teacher trope. Oh, I fucking love a little bit of an age gap, bitch. Loved their story. Loved it. Again, super dark. He was quite mean to her. And you know, and he's also married with the kids. So I know a lot of people don't like cheating in books. Fair enough. I don't like cheating in real life. But in books, I don't care because it's not real. But there is cheating in this book. This book was the weirdest book I have ever fucking read. Like straight up. No way is this a fucking like a simple book. It was fucking weird. And even the writing. Now, it's not my favorite book I've ever read, but 
in the terms of the dark romance books I've read, this had a really interesting storyline and it was very like, I was kind of scared reading it. Like I thought like for a dark romance, I was like, oh, like I don't want to read this alone at night. Just the way it's written and like the setting, it's very dark, very gothic. So this one's called A Lesson in Thorns by Serena Simone. How do I explain this book? The books I mentioned are always super easy to read. I'm not very good with reading. I'm not very good with spelling. Um, so I need like easy reads. This one kind of lost me just a little bit at times because of how complex her writing was and the fact that she used really big words you no one uses. Like I had to look it up on Wikipedia to see what the fuck it meant. That was something that I didn't like, that she like over described everything and it was like a page of description of what the fucking plant looked like before it got to anything. Um, but in saying that, I really did love how much effort she put into the book to really set the scene and also the storyline because it was something so different. It's kind of like a cult. I don't want to say cult. Like a like a sex cult? No, it's not like a sex cult. Uh, is it? I don't know. One summer, six kids get together. And their parents are like working on like this secret society like thing. Um, and they're in England at like this mansion, this old, really old mansion type of thing. So there's these like six kids that are hanging out together. There's three girls, three guys. They end up finding like a, like a underground, like a, like a secret pathway or something at this estate. And they end up finding this place called the Thorn Chapel. And then they end up going home at, at the end of the summer. And they're not talking for like 12 years or something ridiculous. So 12 years later, this girl gets this random letter in the mail. And it's posted from the estate. Uh, so she asks everyone, she's like, did anyone send me this? And everyone's like, no, bitch. And she realizes the writing on this piece of paper is actually the same writing as her mum. And her mum has gone missing. At the same time of receiving this letter, one of the guys that she used to hang out with, like when she was a kid, on that summer... Uh, has contacted her and offered her a job at this estate. Flies over there, moves into this estate with this dude, and all six of the kids are there. Like, all of them are back together. And they're in their, like, 20s now. They haven't seen each other since they were kids. This book is very, like, what's the word? Like, polyam... Po poly, um... What's the word? Like, when you all date each other? It's very much like that. Like, it's like a, everyone kind of has feelings for one another and are, like, connected to one another. So there's, like, all these little, like, moments in the book where they're, like, all turned on by one another but no one acts on anything. It's kind of like a mystery book. I don't know if I'm making any sense. It's very complex. It's kind of like a mystery book as well because this girl's trying to figure out what happened to her mum. Why does she feel so connected to this place and to these kids? Like, they're all feeling like, I feel like we are one. Like, we are connected. Why do we feel like that? And, like, what were our parents doing that summer? Like, what was their secret project? Like, what were they working on? This book is dark in the sense that there's, like, rituals in it. Um, they're not, like, sp like they're not magical or anything, but they do, like, this ritual. Um, and the sex scenes, bitch. This is some, like, BDSM shit. Hurt me. Spank me. Tie me up, bitch. Make me bleed. This is that. And I get really fascinated by this type of stuff. It doesn't turn me on. Like, I didn't get any uh, vagina flutters with this book. <laughs> but I was definitely, like, interested. I was like, oh, I find it interesting. Like, there's one scene in this book where they're all kind of, it's like an orgy. It's very full on. It's not going to be for everyone. It's not. It definitely isn't. If you are someone who likes more complex reading, you don't want an easy read. You want something that you need to focus on and concentrate. This is something that you have to sit down and fully give all your attention to. I love a bad boy. More than a bad boy. Like, kill people for me, thank you. Are you involved in drugs? Like, are you a kingpin? Like, let me know. Like, I love reading about that shit. My next book is a mafia book, bitch. And when I tell you it's a mafia book that's good, do not sleep on this. I recommended this to my sister-in-law and she loved it. So if you're into this shit, read this. So this is Menace by J.M. Dahauer. 
So this is about this guy called Lorenzo who is in the Mafia. He's got one eye. There's a whole story in the book about why he's only got one eye. He gets pickpocketed by this girl who is a sex worker. She is on the run from the Russians, babe. She is on the run. She's hiding out. She's trying to like get away from, well, not necessarily get away, but she's trying to hide from these Russians. She's on a mission uh, to keep hidden from them. So Lorenzo, the mafia dude, ends up hunting her down, get back the money that she stole from him. During this time of him being on the hunt for her and her being on the run from the Russians, they kind of realize that they can help each other out. There's lots of stuff in this book that are really heavy. The one thing I want to say is the woman in this book, I forgot the character's name, but she's like such a true heroine. Oh my God, like she has been through the ringer and nothing can break her. She is such a boss bitch. I definitely love that there's a lot of humor to it as well. Like I actually lolled quite a bit throughout this book. Like Lorenzo is actually quite funny. Um, he takes the piss out of a lot of things in his life. I loved this. I literally sat down and read these two books back to back yesterday. Loved every minute of these. These two books reminded me of Menace, but not they're not mafia related. So this girl ends up getting involved in this like shooting at a mall when she was a kid. And she gets saved by this guy who's about 15 years old. She ends up like falling in love with him. Thinks that he's her hero because he saved her life. And then like years down the track. I think it's like 10 years down the track. She ends up tracking him down. Sleeping with him. Getting pregnant. Dropping the kid off at his doorstep. And then disappearing. This guy's left with this baby. And he's like 29. And he's just like what the fuck am I going to do with this kid? Like I, what am I going to do? Who... And he ends up raising this baby. Four years later, she is back in his life wanting to know her daughter, um, wanting to be a part of her life. And he's like, no, bitch. You cannot dump this baby on my doorstep, run away for four years, and then come back and wanting to be a part of her life. No, she is my daughter, not yours. And then it kind of goes from there. It's really interesting because this book also like had some plot twists in it that I did not see coming. I was like, wait, what? It is very much like a dark romance because it has like, like psychopaths <laughs> involved in it. It was such a good read, really easy to read. Like this one, I was just like page after page after page. I really highly enjoyed this book. I loved every minute of this. So whether you're into like student teacher tropes, age gap tropes, mafia storylines, you know, Fucking sex workers, these books are for you. 100, 100% love, love, love. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you want more steamy romance novel recommendations, let me know in the comments below or even thumbs up this video. I know these videos don't get a lot of views, but I honestly don't give a fuck because I enjoy filming them. And you guys that watch these videos appreciate that I film these. So yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are. Keep on enjoying yourself in isolation and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.